Hello, and welcome back to Having Fun Repairs. Got a lovely little device to do a bit of troubleshooting on. Came out of a 1992 MR2 Turbo. It's an instrument cluster, uh, supposedly with some backlight LED issues. Uh, chassis for this vehicle, probably something a common chassis number amongst MR2 fans, an SW20. So I'll probably title the video in accordance with this information. But as well, let's zoom out. Here is the uh, part number from the instrument cluster. And there's the front. And what I was told is that the LEDs, uh, blue in color, are dim, the main ones out of your primary four gauges here, your tachometer, speedometer, fuel gauge, uh, temp gauge, etc. <clears throat> now, looking at the board, not seeing too many issues. Uh, things aren't really labeled as far as you pop these out. What is the positive side and the negative side of the, these uh, light emitting diodes? So we'll do a bit of testing. Uh, I think this might be an easy fix. There's a little hint. Sometimes that's the worst thing to ever say. Uh, but hopefully it is and we can condense this down to Maybe a 10 minute video, 15 minutes tops, who knows. Alright, so first things first, I need to poke around this board to see what side, which of these vias, these runs here, are positive, are positive rail, and which ones are negative. So, under diode tests and trying to do a resistant measurement, wasn't getting any continuity no matter the arrangement of my leads. I was, would expect, given it's the diode, I would have an open in one direction and a short in the other. Although I don't know the specifics of how these LEDs are uh, oriented. Uh, in conjunction with the internal wiring for them to illuminate. It could be wired up to where either side uh, they'll still illuminate depending on the voltage and maybe it's just my fluid meter isn't supplying enough bias on those LEDs to get anything across. So what I'll do instead is I'll just do a simple continuity test. lines going all the way up to this connector here so that tells me that this is this is where our I would assume 12 volts from whatever plugs into here is feeding these uh, these bulbs to illuminate that's got to be coming from these two copper pads. It's a continuity test. I should have that one at the bottom here, bottom there, 
and without moving it, should be at the bottom of every single one of these. And I do have it at the bottom. Let me try the top. Same for the top. 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 So we definitely have continuity. So the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to try with my benchtop power supply. I'll connect it up to these two pads here to see if I can provide enough supply voltage to get these bulbs to illuminate. Then we'll move through there. Once I figured out the proper orientation on this, I was able to plug out to the benchtop power supply, but as you can tell, there's a bit of flickering occurring here. <clears throat> Not too sure if it's because the LEDs are starting to go out, maybe I'm supplying too great of a voltage. Could just be. seems to be more steady around 10 volts but I did notice that the orientation on one of these was on backwards the way it was seated in its socket it's not the same orientation as all the others so I wonder if that's the reason why it wasn't illuminating very well could have been. So orientation does matter. And I want to see if I can get rid of this flickering a little, a little bit. And what I'll do to help that out is clean off these contacts, clean off the copper here. And use my uh, buddy paint pen. This is uh, the, if you haven't seen it already, it's, I've introduced it in a different video. But it uh, applies like a, a gel, uh, almost like a magic marker, but a little more on the gel side. Uh, conductive paint, and I can put it around these pads to restore some of that uh, surface on it. And it will still conduct fine. I use stuff like this, similar on circuit trace repairs before. It's great stuff. But uh, we'll clean it up and apply some of this and see how it goes.
that cleaned up, it seems like there's a bit less flickering until you get right about up to 10, closer to 11 volts. Now again, I don't know if it's uh, 10 volts that are that is supplied to this or 12. But I would suspect that these LEDs are also tied to a dimmer switch. So I won't, would want to believe the highest it will be supplied from the battery voltage of the vehicle is 10. Alright, excuse me, 12. You still see a bit of flicker <clears throat> here even at 10 volts. 10.38 uh, to be exact. So that's making me think. that you've got the same issue in this uh, these type of LEDs as you do say in your house. Now a lot of people uh, to conserve energy in their home will swap out incandescent bulbs with the LED bulbs. That's becoming more and more pop, uh, common. However, LEDs do not play well if they are on say a dimmer switch, right? Uh, because Because you're more concerned not with the supply voltage but with the current draw that's coming from that line with the LEDs in. It's not going to be as uh, significant as it would be with uh, incandescent bulbs. They just draw more current. And so you run into issues like this. And so I think what I'll do is take a uh, one mega ohm resistor yeah so what I'm going to do is take a one mega ohm resistor and from the furthest bulb from the supply which will be this far right one here is I will attempt to put a one mega ohm resistor uh, between the positive and the negative rail. Now really you would want to go from the positive rail to a ground not associated with the same uh, uh, rails that are feeding these bulbs I want to go to like a chassis ground on the other side of that resistor. But I don't think that's going to be something that's uh, feasible on here. I can poke around a bit to see if, uh, see if I can find something that would be a chassis ground. I'm not sure the entire topology. I don't have a schematic to this. I'm not sure if there's a chassis ground that goes to these uh, where the connectors slide in place here. So we'll try it first between these vias heading to this far right side. So if I bring this up to the camera and turn on the light real quick. Uh, these two traces you have here where you have that bit of copper that's exposed. That's where I'll put it and we'll see what, what occurs. Uh, with that one mega ohm resistor in line with this. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do next. Over 
11. Right about 12 volts. That's a little too high. Back off a bit. It's my fine adjustment. Still blinking out at 12 volts. Alright, so through a bit of movie magic, if I can put it in that terms, I found out a uh, better orientation to put in the resistor. Now, it shouldn't matter where that resistor is in the circuit. Um, however, since we have it running in, uh, in parallel, if I can put it that way, instead of in, in series or uh, with the voltage coming in, <clears throat> I decided to stick it closer to this part right here up where the connector is going to be and I went ahead and uh, tidied back up all this and right now we have it at 10 volts just slightly over but I'm going to increase it all right at 11 I get a little bit of flicker, but it, for the most part, stays off and evens out, even once I get up to 12 volts. So I think this is where we're going to leave it be, and I'm going to give it back to <clears throat> uh, the guy who gave this to me to work on for a bit. Now he said that the lights were too dim. And uh, I think we proved that a hey, one LED was uh, in backwards, and that's the reason why everything was so dim. But B, knowing that these things are tied to the dimmer switch, um, we need to be able to compensate for that since it's not an incandescent bulb. I think this one mega ohm resistor between the positive and negative rail up towards the connector is going to be able to do. Provide that compensation. Anyways, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, uh, like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.